journey with us to Titan, Saturn's largest moon and a celestial body that has long captivated scientists and space enthusiasts alike. Titan is unique in our solar system. It's the only moon known to have a dense atmosphere, and much like Earth, it has stable bodies of surface liquid. However, unlike Earth, Titan's lakes, rivers and seas are composed of methane and ethylene, not water. This presents a tantalizing question. Could Titan, with its thick atmosphere and liquid methane seas, harbor life? The conditions on Titan are harsh by Earth standards, with surface temperatures averaging around minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit. Yet life, as we are beginning to understand, can be incredibly resilient and adaptable. Imagining life in the methane seas of Titan, Saturn's mysterious moon, invites us into a world of fascinating speculation. If life exists in these frigid, hydrocarbon-rich waters, it would likely be vastly different from the life forms we know on Earth. The extreme conditions of Titan, with temperatures plunging to minus 290 degrees Fahrenheit and seas of liquid methane and ethane, create an environment where only the most adaptable and specialized organisms could survive. One possible inhabitant of Titan's methane seas could be the methanosaurs, hypothetical creatures that have evolved to swim in the methane and ethane lakes and rivers. Unlike Earth's aquatic life, which relies on water as a solvent for biological processes, these beings might use methane in a similar manner. Their cellular structure would be incredibly different from Earth's life forms, possibly based on a silicon or arsenic biochemistry, as opposed to the carbon-based DNA of terrestrial organisms. This alternative biochemistry would be a result of Titan's distinct environment and the availability of elements. These methanosaurs could have evolved ways to extract energy from Titan's limited resources. One possibility is that they use a form of chemosynthesis, deriving energy from the reaction of methane with other chemicals in Titan's environment. This process could be analogous to some extremophiles on Earth that thrive in environments devoid of sunlight, relying on chemical reactions to produce energy. Another intriguing possibility is the existence of methane medusae, jellyfish-like creatures floating in the colder upper layers of the methane seas. These beings could have developed a form of buoyancy control, adjusting their internal methane levels to float or sink, similar to how Earth's jellyfish control their position in water. Their feeding mechanism might involve filtering organic compounds from the methane, analogous to plankton feeding organisms in Earth's oceans. In the deeper, darker parts of the methane seas, we might find creatures akin to Earth's deep-sea organisms. These titanite leviathans could be enormous, slow-moving beings, conserving energy in an environment where resources are scarce. They might use bioluminescence not for communication as on Earth, but as a way to attract or detect prey in the pitch-black depths. The adaptation of sensory organs in Titan's sea creatures would also be a fascinating area of speculation. Lacking sunlight, vision might be less important, and these creatures could have developed sophisticated sonar or vibration-sensitive organs to navigate, communicate and find food in the murky depths of the methane seas. The potential existence of microscopic life in Titan's seas also raises intriguing possibilities. These microorganisms, or methanomicrobes, could form the base of a unique food web, filling a role similar to phytoplankton in Earth's oceans. Their existence would be a crucial component of Titan's ecosystem, supporting larger methane-based life forms. Embarking deeper into the theoretical ecosystems of Titan's methane seas, we encounter the concept of the Titan Leviathans. These hypothetical beings are envisioned as the rulers of the deep, colossal creatures that could dwarf even the largest earthly whales. In the frigid, pressure-laden depths of Titan's methane oceans, these leviathans would need to possess extraordinary adaptations to thrive. The physiology of a Titan leviathan could be a marvel of alien biology. In an environment devoid of sunlight and composed of liquid methane, traditional Earth-like respiration wouldn't be possible. Instead, these creatures might rely on a unique form of chemical respiration. This could involve extracting energy from methane or other hydrocarbons present in Titan's seas, possibly utilizing the moon's rich organic compounds as a source of nourishment. One could imagine these leviathans having thick, insulated skins or exoskeletons to protect them from the extreme cold. Their bodies might be streamlined for efficient movement through the dense methane seas with large, fin-like appendages to propel them through the liquid. These appendages would need to be incredibly strong yet flexible to navigate the high-density liquid methane and ethane. 
Given the lack of light in Titan's depths, the Titan Leviathans would likely rely on other senses to hunt and navigate. They might use a form of echolocation or vibration sensitivity, emitting and detecting sounds or movements in the methane to find prey, avoid obstacles and communicate with each other. This sensory adaptation would be crucial in an environment where visual cues are virtually non-existent. In terms of diet, these leviathans could be the top predators in Titan's marine food chain, preying on smaller methane-based creatures. They might employ methods of hunting that are entirely alien to us. For instance, they could release clouds of chemical agents to disorient or incapacitate their prey, or use elaborate traps formed from their own bodies like luring appendages. The reproductive habits of the Titan Leviathans would also be a subject of intrigue. They might lay eggs in the warmer shallows of the methane seas or give birth to live young. The care and nurturing of their offspring could involve unique behaviors adapted to the challenges of life in a methane environment. Social structures among these hypothetical creatures could be complex, with group hunting, communication through low-frequency sounds, and even possible forms of methane sea songs analogous to the vocalizations of Earth's whales. In the twilight zone where Titan's methane seas meet its icy crust, a unique ecosystem might exist, home to hypothetical organisms known as the shadow swimmers. These speculative beings would be adapted to life in a world of extreme contrasts, the interface between the frigid methane seas and the relatively warmer ice. Shadow swimmers might possess the ability to transition between solid and liquid methane states, thriving in the slushy mixture at the icy boundary. Their physiology could include specialized appendages or body structures enabling them to cling to the underside of the ice or to propel themselves through the semi-solid methane slush. These adaptations would be crucial for navigating and hunting in this unique environment. Bioluminescence could be a key feature of these creatures. In the dimly lit world under Titan's ice, light production might serve multiple purposes as a means of communication, to attract prey or even to confuse predators. Unlike Earth's bioluminescent organisms, which often use light to attract mates or signal distress, Titan's shadow swimmers might use bioluminescence as their primary means of interaction. In terms of diet, the shadow swimmers could be omnivores or carnivores, feeding on smaller organisms that inhabit the ice methane interface or scavenging organic material trapped within the ice. Their feeding habits might include a form of ice grazing, where they consume microorganisms and organic particles within the ice layer, or active predation on other methane-based life forms. The shadow swimmers' reproductive strategies would likely be as unique as their environment. They might lay eggs in the warmer crevices of the ice or give live birth to young, which would need to be adept at surviving in the harsh conditions of Titan from the moment of birth. The mysteries of Titan, with its alien landscapes and the potential for life, have not only intrigued scientists but have also given rise to various conspiracy theories. Some of these theories suggest that space agencies and governments have already discovered signs of life on Titan but are withholding the information from the public. Proponents point to the limited data released from missions to Titan and the slow progress in sending follow-up missions as potential evidence of a cover-up. Another popular theory speculates that Titan's methane seas and ice structures could be harboring advanced alien civilizations or outposts hidden from our detection methods. The idea posits that these hypothetical beings could be using Titan as a base for observing Earth or as a waypoint in their interstellar journeys. Some conspiracy theorists go further, suggesting that unusual features observed on Titan's surface, like the so-called magic islands observed by the Cassini spacecraft, are evidence of alien activity. These features, which appeared and disappeared in Titan's seas, have been explained by scientists as likely being caused by natural phenomena such as methane bubbles or floating ice. However, in the world of conspiracy theories, such explanations are often viewed with skepticism. While these theories are not supported by scientific evidence and are often based on misinterpretations or selective readings of available data, they highlight the fascination and curiosity that Titan inspires. The moon's enigmatic nature and the tantalizing possibility of life make it a perfect canvas for the imagination, both in scientific speculation and in the realm of conspiracy theories. As we plan future missions to Titan, like the Dragonfly mission set to launch in 2027, we may finally uncover the secrets of this mysterious moon, shedding light on its true nature and possibly on the existence of life beyond Earth.
Until then, Titan remains a source of wonder, speculation and intrigue, capturing our imagination and our desire to explore the unknown. And as always, we hope you enjoyed our video today. Thanks for watching.